Welcome to another DaVinci tutorial. This one's by special request. Several people have asked me, can DaVinci blur out car number plates, license plates? Well, the simple answer is yes. The complicated answer is, well, what we're actually doing is we're actually trying to blur a moving object, which is changing shape, direction and angle. Uh, a number plate is a rectangle. If it's looking straight at the camera, then it's a rectangle. As the camera gets, as the object gets nearer and further from the camera, it changes size. As I bring it nearer to the camera, it becomes larger. As I bring it away from the camera, it becomes smaller. As I rotate it, it turns from a rectangle into a trapezoid. So, depending on the relative angle to the camera is what we've got to do. So we've got to track something that's got those three parameters going. Da Vinci for a free program is very, very good, and it can actually do that, which I will demonstrate for you right now. The first thing to do, which I've already done, is to import your media in via the media pool. If you don't know what that is, then you need to look back at some of my earlier tutorials. So we've got our media in the media pool. We drag it down and put it on the timeline on the edit screen. Once we've done that, we've got to make some cuts. What we're going to cut is we're going to decide where we want to start the blur and where we want to stop the blur. So I'm just going to scroll along here. And I've decided I'm going to start the blur. Let me just zoom in on that. I've decided I'm going to start the blur there because that's just about where you can make out the number plate. So I make <coughs> I make my first trim there. So I'll make a trim just there. And then I'm going to move forward until we lose sight of the vehicle. Which, let's just scroll out again. I think it's about there, that we no longer need to blur the number plate after that. So we make another cut at about there. Now we've decided with our cuts exactly where we want to blur, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the colour window. The colour window is this little wheel down here. Can you see it where the mouse is? Click that. And that puts us into the colour window. Let's open it all up. As you can see, it's brought our clip in all three sections. The first section the middle section and the last section. It's the middle section we want to work on, so I'm just going to click that. Now, at the moment, my screen's a bit small, so I'm just going to get rid of some of the things that we're not going to be using, like nodes and effects. And we're not actually going to be using this clip timeline down here. So you come over here, click clips, and it gets rid of the clips timeline. Click nodes, it gets rid of the nodes. Click open effects, it gets rid of the open effects. You can bring them back at any time just by clicking them. Look. That's it. That gives us a bit of a larger screen to work with. So now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so that I can see what it is that I want to blur. There we go. Right. Now, if you look here, where it says window, we have a circle, or rather it's an ellipse, with four dots on it. That's called our power window. Now, we click that. We could be anywhere. We could be in that window or that window, but what the window we want is, is we want the power window. So we click that. If you look now, here, we've got some, we've got our toys, which is a linear square, a linear circle, a polygon, a pen, or a gradient. Well, when we look at the shape of the number plate, that's rectangular. So the nearest shape we've got to it is a square. So let's just choose our linear square. Let's just zoom out. As you can see, we have a square over the picture. So let's just drag it and shape it roughly to where we want to blur. So we'll just move that in. Sorry, not blur, track. We've got to track first, blur later. Let's just move that in. Now, obviously, we're working on something very small, so we have to zoom in to see it properly. That's about what we want to track. You'll notice I've actually got 
three boxes. I've got an inner box, a middle box, and an outer box. The outer box is the boundary of what we're tracking. That means don't track anything outside of this area. The furthest box, the big outer box, is the softness. The level of softness we want on our effect, which I'll come to in a little while later. But for the moment, all we're doing is we're concentrating on tracking the number plate. So we've highlighted the number plate. Let's come back out again. Now, what we want to do is we want to track it. So let's just make that a bit bigger so I can see what's going on. We now come to the tracking screen, which is this screen here. It's a little target. Click that. Now, here's our tracking controls. We have a track backwards, track forwards, track by single frame forwards, track by single frame backwards. Well, hopefully, the software is going to track this completely. So there's a couple of things we need to do. The first thing we need to do is make sure that Cloud Tracker here is, collect is selected, which it is. And then we select Interactive Mode. Make sure it initializes. It will tell you up there. And then if we press play on our tracking screen, that should track forward with that number plate. Let's give it a go and see. Yes, it did. It tracked forward with the number plate. But as I said at the beginning, what we're trying to track is an object that is not only moving, but changing size. And as you can see, the computer is struggling a bit and it's trying to twist because it's not exactly sure what it was we want to track. So let's just move the pointer there. What it's done is, at the point I've stopped, it's set a keyframe. I'm just going to delete this keyframe because I'm going to talk to you about keyframes in a minute. But I will tell you that when I move the pointer to the right, any keyframe immediately to the left of the pointer is deleted. So click delete keyframe. As you can see, it's deleted that keyframe. Right, I'm just going to move the playhead back to the point where it starts to lose the tracking, which is about there. Let's zoom in a bit more. Now, I'm going to add my own keyframe. You see this over here? Whoops. Let's move the playhead back to where I was. I'm going to add my own keyframe, which is this control here. So I press that little dot, and as you can see, it's put a white keyframe in there. Now, a keyframe is a very simple thing. It's an instruction. It says, whatever you were doing up until this point is fine, but now from this point onwards, I want you to do something slightly different. In this case, we're tracking. So... I've done the tracking so far up to the point of the keyframe. I'm quite happy with it. But I want to change the tracking now to go forward in a different direction. So we set our keyframe, which tells the computer where to stop and where to change direction. Now, also, very important, untick interactive mode and make sure that you click frame mode or frame mode is highlighted. If you're in clip mode and you make any changes, it changes the tracking across the whole clip, which will throw it completely off. Um, on a moving object. We only want to act on the frame that we're looking at, so make sure you click frame. So click frame, and now we can start to move the bounding box about a bit. So let's just come out a bit to track that number plate slightly better. There we go, right. As you can see, I've got my three boxes. I've made sure that the inner box is covering the number plate. When we blur, this box here will be the boundary of our blur. You'll see that in a moment. But anyway, let's just make sure we're back in interactive mode. And let's just track forward again and see if it tracks the number plate. Let's just come out a bit. See how far we go now. Yeah, it's tracked the number plate a lot better. Let's just delete that keyframe again. It's tracked the number plate a lot better to about that point where it starts to lose it. So once again... Add a new keyframe. Let's zoom in. And let's turn off interactive mode. And give it a new set of tracking instructions. There we go. We want to track forward from this point. Let's zoom out again. And let's track forward again. Make sure you turn on interactive mode and track forward. As you can see, it's actually kept complete pace with our number plate. 
this track forwards and back to see what happens. Yep. Oh, no, it started to lose tracking about there. It started to wander off. So once again, where it wanders off, which is this point here, I'm going to add another keyframe. Let's just delete that last keyframe. Add a new keyframe. Let's zoom in again. Oops. Turn off interactive mode. Right, zoom out again, and hopefully that should track a bit better. Um, turn on interactive mode, press track forward and see what happens. Yes, that's now tracked to the end of the clip. Now you'll notice that it's become larger at the end, which I don't really want. So I'm just because, that's because it can't really see the number plate anymore, so it doesn't know exactly what to track. So I'm just going to go back a bit to the point that it becomes larger. which is about there, add another keyframe, add another keyframe, turn off interactive mode, just make everything just that little bit smaller. That's it, and let's just track forward again and see what happens. Turn on interactive mode, track forward. Yes, that's much better. That's our tracking done. How do we blur? Well, let's come back to anywhere, doesn't really matter, anywhere in the frame. And over here is our blur window. Just click blur. And there's our blur controls. Well, in this case, we're going to do a radius blur. So all we need to do is turn up the radius. And there you can see, it's blurred the number plate. Look, if we play forward, completely blurred the number plate along the lines of the tracking that we put in. There we go, it's followed the number plate all the way through this particular scene. Now, we can come back to our editing screen, and we can edit the rest of our clip as we see fit. Bear in mind that this bit here has had the tracking done, and the blurring done, so we can now carry forward and do what else it is we need to do on our clip. And that is how you blur a number plate, license plate, in DaVinci Resolve 16. Please, if you have any questions about any of my tutorials, this one or any others, please leave them in the comments and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. But remember, if you want me to carry on making tutorials and you want to see more, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. answer is yes. The complicated answer is, oh, what the fuck is that video light doing? Oh, let's turn the light on, dickhead. Right.